What's going on producers? In this video, I'm going to teach you nine ways to make your chord progressions more interesting. This is a video of a live coaching session I did with producers that I mentor, where we talked about ways to take typical chord progressions and make them more juicy, make them more interesting, make them more colorful, and make them more soulful. That being said, before we get into it, there is a base level of knowledge that you need to have to have the utmost flexibility with what I'm about to teach you. And I do go over that base level of knowledge rather quickly in the beginning, just so we can all be on the same footing. So if you want me to make a video that's dedicated to that base level of knowledge, so you can get the most out of this more advanced material you'll be learning in this video, let me know in the comments. That being said, by the end of this video, you'll be able to take these exact voicings, these exact substitutions, these exact sexy smooth vibes and use them in your tracks so that you can take the chord progressions that you have and make them that much more interesting and that much more effective for your listener from an emotional standpoint and really develop your tracks so it's not the same thing, the same chord progressions and the same sounds that we've been hearing in your other tracks. I know you're absolutely gonna love this. There's so much to unpack out of this one. So definitely take some notes. And if you like this video, like it and subscribe to the channel so you get some more value. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. This is gonna be super cool. It's something that I called, the more I teach it, the more I realize that this is what it is. The songwriter's alphabet, AKA the Roman numeral formula. Cause that's really what it is. Like songwriters use, use that thing like all the time. And there's so many guys who maybe they don't even know theory that well, but they understand the Roman numeral formula and so they can write great songs. And so we all know what this is, right? And for those who don't, I'm gonna give a little review. And for those who do, this will be, this will be good to, just to cement some things. The songwriter's alphabet, which is, which is the Roman numeral formula, but I'm gonna refer to it as a songwriter's alphabet because I wanna think about it in the sense of writing a song and not necessarily just some theoretical stuff. So the one is always major, the two is always minor, the three is always minor, the four is always major, the five is always major, the six is always minor, and the seven is always diminished, right? Module one, we should definitely know that, and I think everybody here has been through module one. Now, what makes things cool, though, is when you what to this, is when you what this. <laughs> when you play like modal harmony and go into in and out of it. When you go in and out of it, exactly. When you change this, it makes things sound cool because I can take a progression. Let me just, let me just say like one, three, four, six. Why not? Oh, let's do this. Let's do one, three, four, two. In the key of C, C major, E minor, F major, D minor, back home. Sounds cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But you see, it's not very like spicy. <laughs> you know, it's not very juicy. To get things to sound juicy and spicy, you alter this formula. There are specific ones that you alter in specific ways more often than not. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about. That's the crux of today's lesson. What things you can alter. Because when you alter things, so for example, I'll put this in red. Instead of playing minor three, I can say dominant three. And instead of saying minor two, I can say minor seven, five, five, right? So instead of E minor, which naturally occurs, I'll play E seven flat nine. And instead of D minor, I'll play D minor seven flat five. Just as a demonstration, I'll play them back to back, one, no alterations, second time, common alterations. Something different about that last one. You, you, you hear, and as soon as you hit this, you're like, whoo, wait a second. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you see, it brings a little bit more attention. You're like, please, please play that last chord. You know what I mean? So that's what this stuff does. It does, it does it really nicely. So some of the common ways that we can uh, change this up is very simple. Let's talk about the two. So with the two, what you can do with the two, there's two main things you can do with the two. Obviously the first one we talked about, which is to make it a half diminished seven chord. And that's really nice. And that's usually just gonna bring you back to one. And I think we can find that in, I believe I can fly. I used to think that I cannot go on. You see, imagine if it wasn't like that. I used to think that I cannot go on. No, I used to think that I could not go on. 
like that minor seven, five five, is more somber. I used to think that I could not go Oh shoot, yeah, dude, tell me more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas the first one is like, okay. Next, the other thing you could do is you can make it a dominant nine chord or a dominant seven chord. That's a very popular choice. So again, we can find this in, and it just happens to be in the, in the key of C, I believe, also. Right? So we have one, dominant two, four, one. Okay? Imagine it was just a regular two. Doesn't feel the same. Because that F sharp. That guy gives you, it leaves the key for a second. Uh, so it sounds really, really good. Another great way to do that is if you want to do like a 2 5 1 coming back home, that always sounds really good. Let's say I'm starting on F. It sounds very gospel y, that, that 2. So instead of. Get this. And it gives you some extra voice leading. And the reason it sounds cool is because almost everything else stays the same. You get this two. And when we go to the G, that's really all that changes. But all this stays exactly the same. So you don't need to attack it again. So you get this like inner. You know what I mean? That's what's really cool about that. So those are like the two options really with the two. With your three, we can make this one also a dominant chord, but, but dominant seven flat nine. Don't worry about why this one's a dominant nine and why this one's a dominant flat line. That is just gonna confuse you. It leaves the scale too much. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. It leaves the scale too much. The D, the D nine, um, notice there's only one note that's outside, right? And if I play, um, e7 flat 9, which is the third chord. Notice there's only one note that's outside of the key. So it's like a slight deviation coming back. We're not going all the way over here and coming back, you know what I mean? Like if I were to play E9 sharp 11. This is E9 sharp 11. So if I were to, if I were to play that. <laughs> See, that sounds horrible. <laughs> Because it's too many notes that are that are leaving. And so the reason that these dominant chords work is because there's only one note that's leaving. And that's why we pick those qualities. So three, seven, flat nine. And that can bring you to three places. That can bring you to the six. It can bring you a half step up to the four, which is always a nice option. I hear a lot of songs do this. Right? Um, or to the two, which is very similar to the four. You know, they all have the, the good voice leading there. And we can hear this in a million songs, but uh, Billie Eilish song, the, the... Right, there it is. Ah, finally, you know what I mean? And then later, actually, in the song, uh, she brings it to the four. Da -da. You know, she brings it to the F instead of going to the A. So you see how it's a little bit different feeling? That's, that's a great option there. And notice, notice how we have this theme of just doing the opposite thing. Instead of playing the two minor, make it a dominant, which is a major type sound. Instead of having the three B minor, play a dominant, which is a major type sound. So what do you think we're gonna do to the major four? Make it minor. Boom, there you go. And as a matter of fact, in that song, they do that. They take the, the four in C major. One, two, three, four. And they make it minor. You can just do those back to back in a song. I think I wrote a whole song like this one time. It's a very similar sound to the, the minor seven flat five. See, this 
one's has slightly more dread to it. This one's a little darker. Phantom of the Opera like. But yeah, so you can make it minor. And it's always going to give you a sad feeling. It's almost like sad that has to do with romantic. It's just always really the way it feels like. As a matter of fact, in that song. So do you. Fire. The five, um, we, we, can, we can do all the different dominant things, but whatever, we're not going to talk about that. Um, the six, though, um, the six, this is another one where we can do a couple things. We make it dominant, and we do dominant seven, flat nine, which is going to bring you right into the two. Sounds really good. So, for example, if in the key of C, I go to my sixth note. One, two, three, four, five, six. Usually it would be a minor. Make it a major. Dominant, flat nine, which is simply a diminished grip, which is what we learned in module three. This is gonna bring you right into two. Oh, you see how beautiful that is? That's why five to one is so important, dude. You know, yes, this is a six major chord going to a two minor chord, but when you really look at it, it's five, one. It's the crux of everything, dude. You just throw it in different places, but it all functions in the exact same way. I can't think of a song off top that uses this, but we could just be like, you know. I can't, I can't think of a melody that works. Let me combine some of these. So the six we could do that. The six we could also, and this is this is a favorite one, favorite one of mine. Could also make the six a uh, flat six. Hello, I haven't done that yet. This is a really great alteration because it, it it like completely leaves the key, and there's more than one note that's different. And all of these we've only really had like one note that's different, with the exception of now that we've gotten to the six and made that a flat nine. Now we're getting to more than one note that's different, so it's a little bit more striking. But because we play it as a major chord, it's uh, more palatable because a major is a consonant sound. So, so instead of going to six, we take the six, go down a half step, flat it, so we have A flat major. Right, so you guys have heard me do this a million times. <laughs> sounds really good, right? Hey? This sounds super, super, super awesome. Butterflies makes use of this flat six chord. So here they're making use of a lot of them. They go one to the minor four, flat six, flat two. That's why that's so hip, because they're making use of all of these alterations to songwriters alphabet that we're talking about. And with the seven, you can make it flat seven as a major seven, but you can also do as a straight dominant chord. Boom, so you can make that as a flat seven as a dominant or as a flat seven as a major seven. So for example, the hero's journey basically makes use of the six and seven, but as, as flat. And so if we're in C major and I play flat six, flat seven to one, Sounds very heroic, like. Which is why they use it at the end of the Star Spangled Banner all the time, right? Right? But you don't hear them do that all the time. And the home of the bread. Oh, snap, so it's coming. It makes it sound super, super epic. So that's, that's the hero's journey using that flat seven, but you can also use all of them as major seven chords and it makes it just like super smooth. So it still gives you this like sense of, you know, 
rising and ascending like we got somewhere, but just smoother because it's major sevens. But you could also use it as a dominant chord. This is really cool. This is not used all the time, but it is used. So we're in the key of D major here. So one to five as a minor, four, and then flat seven as a dominant. So instead of playing the seventh of this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as what it usually is, um, we'll take the seven, we'll flat it, and we'll play it as a dominant chord. And it gives you a really, really nice uh, soulful sound. So those are all the alterations that you can make to the songwriter's alphabet. You can play one, just as one, two, you can play it as a minor 7 flat 5. You can also play it as dominant. Three, you can play it as a diminished. Four, you can play it as minor. Five, we didn't really talk about this one, but th actually there would, be, there would be two really cool ways to do this. You could do, just do five over one. So like C over G, or one over five actually. And sometimes that gives a really cool soulful vibe one over five and just like one over the fifth bass note really really nice six you can play it as dominant or you can play it as flat six seven you can play it as flat seven or you can play it as dominant and then cool it's a little longer than i thought it was gonna be but i hope it was informative for you guys was that cool that was awesome, man. Like, I've been looking for that information for like, for a long time, man. And like, you just nailed it, dude. That opens up, man. You can, you can do so, so much juice in that. Like, you can write a whole album on what you just said. I want to clarify something. In the different ways that you can put them together. So if I, if I did this, there's only so many ways that you can put that together, right? And that looks manageable. But then I'm like, oh, but you can do these things as well. You're like, what the hell just happened? That opens up Pandora's box. Even though these are common things that are done, the ways that you can put them together becomes almost infinite. Infinite. Like friggin' infinite, dude. When you look at uh, Michael Jackson's thing, what does he do? He does one, and then he goes to the minor four, then the flat six, and then he goes to a tritone sub that's not even written here. And then Billie Eilish said one, three, six, four. But then later she said one, three, four, minor four. So you see, there's so many different ways that you can do this. When it comes to the combinations, that's kind of like level two, when you understand what are some common navigations within this, but knowing what are some of the things that you can alter to, and, and, and what are some of the common resolutions that those dominant chords go to specifically, that, that kind of gets you really, really far. It gets, it, gets you, it gets your foot in the door with it. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad this was helpful for you guys, awesome.